Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. This is Local Chat, episode 158. Folks, joining me this week is the wonderful and lovely Ian Gibson. Hello, I'm back. Was I on last week? I can't remember. It was Goaty. That's what it was. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> All the way from the other side of the Suez Canal, it's Carl from Save Data. Can you take me higher to a place where Ian sings? Technically, uh, Ian will never correct. sing. Correct. I'm just surprised Will got geography correct for once. Yeah. <laughs> I know wow. Libya's far away, but... <laughs> you know... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's a good joke. That's a good joke. <laughs> um, folks, we're here not just to make incredible jokes that win Oscars, but we're also here to talk about video games and to have a little chit-chat. Um, we have no chit-chat section this week, so we will be omitting it. Um, so please, a uh, moment of silence in your own time. If you're listening to this in a car, please pause it and crash. Um, just for Is the there really chit no chit-chat this, this there week? There was zero chit-chat. <laughs> At least one of us has been making a lot of stupid slash awesome purchases lately. Oh, I mean, if people watching this, they see the center screen. Uh, that is my new CCTV camera. Um, oh, shit. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> uh, I can cut over Just the... Super, uh, oh, shoot. Super pixelated. That's awesome. Uh, I can I can dim that down. Uh, hi. Hi. I don't know how to... Oh, I can just turn it off with this. Hi, there's my CCTV that looks camera. so good. <laughs> um, it's kind of wild. It works really well. I put the... Now that I don't have to have my work laptop here, I moved everything over and put a giant mixer from the 90s. Uh, I even bought a Jake microphone uh, so I can do funny oh. things with them. 20, That's 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Is it is really it a real bad. SM58 or is it a... No, it's a, it's a pile. P-Y-L-E. <laughs> Hey, good enough. It's good Some enough. Gomer that's, made what it. I, that's what I switched to. I, I put an SM58 with a switch on it on my Christmas list, and somebody got me one. And I'm loving it so far. It's great. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it, I, that mic surprisingly works. That The board has a whole plug-in for the mic. Um, I've been What's playing around. Let's go through the, let's go through the, the purchase mix. list. So I bought it's awesome. a Panasonic WJMX12. Oh, I know that one. Mm. Well, God, this is like when you start talking about video games and you never describe what the video game is. What did you buy? <laughs> okay, so I bought a Panasonic WJ MX-12, and that is a video <laughs> mixer that allows you to do uh, funky things with the video. Uh, a lot of people nowadays use it for uh, video looping, which is where you point the camera yeah. at a screen and it loops over and over and you do like music and weird stuff. It was originally for like, I don't know, television uh, local broadcast or anything you were doing to a TV in a closed circuit network or whatever, or, or broadcast, um, just for, for switching between videos, two camera in adding effects like the, the mosaic thing I added here. I have a strobe effect that delays how often it shows me. Nice. And I can actually, I can overlay my active video with that underneath and it like mm -hmm. doubles up with a weird shadow thing. Oh, um, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff in here. I can mix between scenes. Uh, I made it black and white uh, as well. Uh, I can make it a little yellow and change all these colors. Um, the CCTV camera is black and white, which is why there's no color coming through. Um, oh, okay, gotcha. But it's it's wild. I like put it all together. It has it has an auto iris, but I I don't know how it works. And all the power went out of Carl's. <laughs> Ignore. <laughs> now that in time the, of, that time of day in the dark yeah. <laughs> um but it's really neat uh it, and i got it for cheap i traded my copy of brawl as part of super smash brothers brawl i was like this That's is worth fair. 20 bucks and the man's thinking it's worth 50 so uh I, is it worth is it worth 20 i thought it was worth more than that no it's like 20 bucks and melee is the one that's oh. expensive and it's like 80. oh that's gotcha gotcha Jesus. that makes sense um that's like people have problems yeah, yeah, I don't I don't understand why you need a copy of a physical copy of a game <laughs> any anymore any day, but I guess if you want to. So anyways, I'm going to be doing a weird stream on Saturday. Uh, I'm going to plug the N64 nice. into this. I have a CRT that I shot. Um, I can shoot with my other camera. Uh, I learned how to I learned how to do masking in 
uh, OBS today and I want to like instead of doing a green screen and green screening it out I just masked out the TV and so only the TV shows up is mask different from cropping yes because I made the mask in Photoshop it's like the alpha mats with black and white oh, so it literally oh. ignores all the black and only plays the white which that's is where the TV nice. is that's and nice and that's what I like. You could make all of the if your camera doesn't move, you can make all of your squares behind you, Ian. Uh, yeah, like open because and because I, I make a black white alpha mask in yeah. Photoshop and then import that into. Yeah. So gotcha. the only issue I ran into is like my camera wasn't in a permanent spot. So I bumped it at one point and I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, I barely fucking idiot. It you is. fucking moron. <laughs> I know. Hey, I will tell you, um, inspired by your recent spending spree i finally forced my father to give me something that i've wanted for several years uh oh but he didn't really give <laughs> oh, it to no. me which uh -oh. is two power over ethernet security cameras hell yeah and a power over ethernet okay. switch so so the way this works it's just a t it's a 1080p apparently has night vision but what's cool about this is it's power over Ethernet, so it provides data and power over Ethernet, as you can tell from the name. But what that means is I, I just looked at the manual. I could technically run a 250-meter Cat5 cable to this, and that's all it needs to power and provide uh, image. And then that just ends up at an IP address on the network, on my local network. So then in OBS, I just go browser source 192.whatever. And it'll pull it up. So I'm hoping to get this set up and maybe I'll just start, I don't know, throw it up in the corners here. I could literally throw it out somewhere. I was thinking like we could do a VR stream, but like I could use my entire garage as the VR space with the Quest 3 and then just have this as the camera. Like I'm coming up with some crazy ideas. So so we're going to we're going to start doing some weird shit soon because nobody watches us anyways. Why not be weird? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? watch uh donkey kong the cartoon on amazon prime we can do it we're allowed to <laughs> i'll be doing that It'll be fun. i like that that's the cr that's the craziest thing you could think of donkey kong yeah i was gonna say <laughs> i mean have you guys seen that show it's pretty fucking wild <laughs> it's, i have not it's probably the worst cgi you've ever seen uh not because it was low budget because that was what cgi was at the time and also uh -huh. like body horror uh it's 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 wild wild, wild tv show um Oof, body horror so yeah Oof. that's the, that's the stuff i've uh i've purchased all of that i have some more cables coming i bought a big box of uh of bnc to uh, com oh, uh rca gorgeous all these it was great i was stupid I, those two gold ones i bought for five dollars and 10 of these silver ones was like six dollars but it was just oh, like yeah. the way that Amazon shows it with like best overall. And you're like, oh, OK. Yeah. And then it's not actually true. Mm. Um, are you going to start? Are you going to start making your own BNC cables? No, I'm not at that point yet. Um, uh, I mean, you bought the connectors. So, yeah, I bought the connectors and I, I bought some extra BNC. BNC cables are surprisingly cheap. Uh, like mm -hmm. I was assuming they'd be more expensive, but uh uh, they connect and uh, everything's. I mean, for this camera's running great off of it. Uh, I had to force. Um, so crazy. Uh, this uh, video capture thing that's working is the thing I told you about, which we tried to use at Extra Life years ago. And then I finally found the driver from it from like 10. It's from like 2011 is the driver for this USB to yeah. RCA and S video. Uh, and, it, and it comes through just fine. Yeah. I, I just have to tell it to. Uh, to behave and i have to force the audio to come through uh but it, it comes through great and i mean it's interlaced uh for sure but uh you know i'm pretty uh, i'm pretty proud of the setup and how yeah. i figured it out so i mean uh, worst case if you need to i have done I, i've done a cheap rca to hdmi and then a cheap hdmi to usb converter like double those up and it does work it actually works yeah. pretty well because i i have so the nice hdmi backup. to rca and i got that on the tv but what i think i'm gonna end up doing is uh is doing the external uh seeing if i can do one out from the board to my computer and the other out separate to my tv and have different things on it because yeah there's technically mm. two outs and i just need to see if they um they work out well but uh, yeah, it's got a memory function, so every time I restart it, I can go right back to what this is on the screen. Um, uh -huh. 
yeah like i said it's, nice. it's, it's fun to mess around with and i'm i'm pleasantly surprised by how how well this board works uh yeah so and the text to... the text great that like you're basically buying like tv studio tech for cheap because it's yeah. from the 90s and nobody's using yeah. it anymore yeah it's yeah it's it's i mean it's expensive but when you think about how it used to be like probably a hundred times the price uh yeah it's so cheap so it's fun cool i'm happy yeah. for you that's it so uh we'll talk to y'all next week uh thank you everyone uh for watching bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> uh so yeah that's the chit chat section filled out and formulized uh next up we have the games we've been playing this week and i'm trying to think of the order of doing this and i think i want to start with carl because one of his games mm. then ties into ian and then one of his ga- games ties into me so i think if we can go through okay. that flow mm. uh i think it'll work yeah. really well so we'll so talk carl, about okay pal world first <laughs> yes we're we'll talking about world first <laughs> perfect exactly what i wanted um carl please tell me about the video games you have been playing well, William, uh, I've been playing, I feel like half of these are the same that they were last time, uh, but I've uh, got around to finishing God of War Valhalla, the DLC for Ragnarok, which is not that long. I just had too much on my plate and I couldn't actually finish. Uh, it's good. It's great. Uh, I think while I was finishing it, I saw on Twitter, it was like the original creator for the character of kratos was like ah, i hate how they've made him recently he's supposed to be angry and david jaffe some reason, probably yeah <laughs> supposed to he support was like yeah sure character development isn't a thing uh and yeah that, hey, Captain that was, blue line yeah <laughs> <laughs> actually that doesn't make any sense i'm sorry i said two opposite things back to back <laughs> yeah to, to, i'll let you i'll let you guess which one i believe <laughs> both sides uh, <laughs> Oh, no, God. see that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. That is, those are both things Trump has said. No. What I said doesn't make sense. Hey, cab that thin blue line. <laughs> hey, cab, <laughs> hey, cab that thin blue line. Jesus God. Oh, what a nightmare. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. All right. Uh, <laughs> how is how is that like uh, roguelike mode? It's uh, honestly pretty pretty good. Uh, it's very Hades style ish. Uh, the game strips you away of everything you have just from the the base game. It's like yeah, you have nothing, so you can start Valhalla without actually finishing the the base game if you want to do that. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, and then you go into the actual like play section, which is just a region of Valhalla, and uh, it's like you complete a section, you get two chests, you open them. Each one gives you a different thing. Some sections you have to beat a big boss and then you have to choose one of three chests. Others you have to do different things. And when you finish the main story, you still have more to discover. And they do like throwbacks to Kratos' old stories and like character development, which apparently we don't want in 2024. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's really good. And it's, it can be pretty tough, which was shocking because they really ramped up the difficulty for the base game. Mm. So I was shocked they went full boss of the walls with uh, the dlc so that was uh Valhalla. Cool. it's pretty fun dope uh, uh also gonna just throw this quickly spider-man 2 played it again because i'm writing a script for that which i've rewritten like nine times at this point and uh yeah i'm not gonna comment too much on it it's it's <laughs> still good it's still great i like it uh recently i think i don't know how true this is i think i saw somewhere that like the last third of the game felt rushed because it actually was and they actually rushed out that part of the game uh and they cut out multiple uh sections multiple missions because they were low on time no no if that's 100 percent true but i feel like i could i could see that but also Mm. if that stuff was included i could also see someone saying they should have cut a bunch of this stuff to make the ending faster yeah so like I feel like I so that, it's interesting you say that because I hadn't heard that complaint. I'd heard Next Lander had talked about how they felt like there was a false ending two thirds of the way through the game. I don't know what the, specifically they were talking about, but they talked about how there was a yeah. point two thirds of the way through where they were like, this mm-hmm. is it. Everything's coming together. It's the end. And then they were like, oh, shit, I still have like another 10 hours after this. Yeah. Yep. But I haven't heard about it not having enough in the back end. Yeah, I think it's like maybe it's because that expectation of thinking that was going to be the end, then you're not 
as like invested with what the rest is mm. happening but yeah i can i can see it kind of being either way but also like with uh the thing i had learned from when those lost levels came out with the last of us remaster part two is like he was one of those lost levels they were like yeah we cut this a couple months before the game came out which is like mm. wild to me that it was that close to release and you cut a level for pacing like yeah, yeah. Uh, so i i kind of understand also that quick being like oh shit we gotta get this game out yeah yeah it's fair uh and uh the very smooth segue i got you with this one ian uh yeah because a zero baby uh i said uh, i have on the doc written kind of because i technically i'm not playing it <laughs> but we've i've been <laughs> editing the uh our playthrough of it on the channel uh -huh. and mm -hmm. i just went on a rabbit hole of yakuza and oh my god <laughs> i've for context i've never touched a yakuza game in my life and i just knew kiryu uh, kiryu wow kiryu and like the bakamitai memes when that was a thing and i was like yeah cool japanese gta i guess and then uh we started playing it on the channel subtle plug and and i was like <laughs> oh okay this is actually like it it does something really good and i think it does it all throughout the entire games and and you can talk about this maybe later, but like it has a really good balance of joke, great bits, like absolutely hilarious and stupid, but at the same time, really serious topics and really serious stories and really serious missions. And you're like, oh my god, I was I was just punching a clown with a trash bag five seconds ago. I'm witnessing a character death right now. <laughs> like it's yeah. it really handles the balance really well, and I, I love that about that game. Yeah, and somehow both of those scenes had like emotional and yeah. thematic depth to them, and you're like, "What yeah. the fuck is this game I'm playing?" It like, yeah. <laughs> how do I care so much about these side stories? Yeah, exactly. What's yeah, my yeah, cabaret zero. club doing? Will can attest to this because I I rammed it down his throat, and then the and then I feel like a year later he finally played the game and admitted it. Which is that Yakuza Zero is one of the best games ever made. It's incredible. You know, it might be my uh, favorite. It might be the best game ever made, other than Factorio. You know, <laughs> the fact that I'm having to think about it says it's in the running. It's it's very very good. It's, it's incredible. It's good. Yeah. And um, to your point about not playing any Yakuza games before that, Yakuza Zero is like. I haven't played all the games, so I can't say it's the best way to get into the series, but it's how I got into the series. I feel like mm. they specifically made that in a way to get new fans into the series because it's it's a prequel to the first one. But in a way yeah. that's that's introducing a lot of people, it doesn't require you to play the previous games. But it was also kind of the kickoff for all the Kiwami remakes they've done. And it's just mm. like it's just a great way to be like, hey, you want to play some Yakuza? And I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, if I had to recommend the Yakuza series to somebody, where would I recommend they go? And I think I would still say Zero, even though uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon is... I may recommend that if they prefer RBGs to action brawlers. Mm -hmm. But but overall, I still think Yakuza Zero is a little bit better. But a fantastic game to hop in the series. Solid yeah. game. Chris is one thing uh, as a last comment on this game. Uh, Chris is one thing which he said at the end was the biggest crutch of Zero is it has to end where Yakuza One starts, so they have to no spoilers, but they have to like weave their way around certain things, which mm -hmm. end up being super sad because they don't happen in Yakuza One and Two, and they just kind of have to deal with that. Yeah, or oh, they have to get them out of the way before one and two happens. Yeah, yeah I could see mm -hmm. that. I could see that. I, I remember Zero. I don't think the story was incredible, but the storytelling was incredible in the main story. And so because of that, I was so into it, even though mm -hmm. I wasn't necessarily on board with all of the story beats that were happening in Yakuza yeah, okay. Zero. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's fantastic. Should I segue into my... Is this is mm -hmm. this appropriate? Well, is this the perfect segue you were talking about? <laughs> <sighs> I guess that works. I'm okay with it. Folks, I've been playing uh, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, which, yes, I did have to look that up. My one big complaint with the Yakuza series is they've they've kind of fucked up the naming recently. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, so let me see if I get this right. I think it was Yakuza 6 Like a Dragon. Seven. Which... It was seven. Mm. I thought seven's the one that came out recently. Anyways, 
It was a Yakuza like a dragon, which switched it to RPG. And now they've decided that the RPGs are going to be called like a dragon colon. And this is the second one, like a dragon infinite wealth. Like a dragon colon? And I believe the Yakuza main series is now Gaiden series, which is in the past. And I'm not even sure if there is a main action Yakuza modern time series anymore. It's very confusing, but long story short, (laughs) uh, basically what happened was in the in the last mainline Yakuza game, they said it's actually it's really ballsy and I really appreciate it, which is the creator of the Yakuza series. And you and you you probably saw this in Yakuza zero because some of the side stories are about uh, are about a JRPG game and like Mm -hmm. this little kid's love for it, etc. The creator of the Yakuza zero loves JRPGs. And so in Like a Dragon, in, in Yakuza Like a Dragon, he was literally just like, uh, fuck it, the series is no longer an action brawler, it's a JRPG. So now the combat is all JRPG based, it's all turn based. Um, Hell yeah. Which is, which was, turns out, like, I don't want to say a great decision, because I don't necessarily love it. Not because I think it's bad, but personally I'm not, uh, I would prefer the action brawler to the to the JRPG experience. Mm. But the way that he implemented it, like I was playing and I forgot one one of the jobs, which is one of the classes, is just homeless person. Right. And you get certain <laughs> skills with that. And it's like, that's fucking great. So anyways, I've been playing like a dragon infinite wealth, which is the sequel to Yakuza like a dragon. Um, can we look that up? Is that six or seven? Yeah. Like a dragon was seven because Yakuza six seven. was called Yakuza six. OK. All right. Uh, anyways, so um. The thing about it is I played Yakuza 7 like a dragon. I got probably 25% of the way through it and I bounced off of it. And I think part of it was I'm not a big fan of JRPGs. And I think part of it was I wasn't getting into it too much. Not the fault of the game. I just I don't think I was in the right headspace. Previously to that, I'd played Yakuza Kiwami, which is a remake of the first game. And I bounced off that about 50% of the way through because I, I don't think I was in the right headspace and was too close to when Yakuza 0 came out. And I played the shit out of Yakuza Zero. So anyways, I was like, I don't know that I should play like a Dragon Infinite Wealth because I bounced off the JRPG part. And I think I don't want to say I've had my fill of Yakuza, but like I still fucking remember all the shit in Yakuza Zero and love it. And I don't want to feel like I'm just doing more of that in a way. Um, but I said, fuck it. I've got time on my hands. Let's buy this game. Let's start playing it. And it led me to start questioning the ways in which I consume video games in terms of if I have a game, do I feel obligated to play it? How many hours per day do I feel like I have to play it? How long will I typically play it day by day by day until I stop playing it? What what's what's your typical like you just got a brand new video game, you want to play it. What's your typical behavior? Is it an hour a day? Is it 10 hours a day until you finish it? You usually drop it after a week, drop it after a month. What's it? Uh, Carl, you go, you go first. What's your typical game playing behavior? Brand new game. Uh, brand new game. Generally, I like free up my schedule beforehand and like binge it. And okay. then it dies out after like a week, I'd say. Gotcha. Will, what's what's your behavior? Uh, my answer is long and arbitrary, so strap in, folks. Um, no, I would say if it's if it's a game that's coming out that's big, like Zelda or Starfield mm. or Baldur's Gate 3, it's like, oh, hey, this is the next game I'm playing. When it, I will yeah. give it as much time as it's clicking for. So, like, Baldur's Gate 3, I, mm. I think I sat down and played for, like, six hours. And it's like, if I'm still Oof. into it, I'll keep playing it yeah. as much as I can, as fast as I can, versus, like, there's a game I've wanted for a while on Steam and it's on sale and I just buy it so I have it. I'm not I don't feel obligated yeah. to play it. But I, I always mm. jump into the game that is is the most recent and the one I want to play. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And and I feel like my behavior was kind of similar to that where I'm like, I have a brand new game. I need to play it a lot, let's say four plus hours per day, and I need to play it every day. And if I miss a day or two, that means I'm not enjoying the game and I should probably stop playing it because it's not quite working for me. And, you know, the running joke is that I I play a game for two hours and even if I love it, I stop playing it. And I've been thinking about that. And I was like, I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm approaching these games wrong. And the thing about Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, and I would say more than Yakuza Zero, and I would say even more than than seven, Like a Dragon is that it's very cutscene heavy. And that's not a bad thing. 
Hmm. But I'm probably four hours into the game. I think the amount of time that I have been hands on controller actively controlling things is probably 45 minutes out of that four hours. The rest of its cutscenes to the extent that my Xbox has literally like Don done the like fake go to sleep, dim the screen in the middle of a cutscene because it's been so long <laughs> since I pressed a button. But here's the thing, folks. Here's the thing, folks. It's fucking great. The cutscenes and the story and the characters, because like I didn't finish uh, seven like a dragon, but I know enough of the characters in there that I know the characters that he's interacting with at the start of infinite wealth. And there's like this like weird social play going on. And, and after maybe like 40 minutes, 45 minutes of the game, I said, Oh, in my head, I went, Hey, this is a TV show, right? Like you may be playing parts of it, but it's also got a lot of cut scenes and I'm playing this because I like the characters in the story and the gameplay is good too. So why don't I treat it like a TV show where if I'm watching a TV show, I don't binge it. I usually watch one or two episodes per day. Maybe every day, skip a couple days and then come back to it. And I'm like, if this game's like 40 hours long, just as an example, I don't know how long it actually is. If it's 40 hours long, that's 40 episodes of a TV show. I don't need to feel obligated to finish that in a week or two. I'm going to take my fucking time with it. It's going to, you know, like for me, if I watch 40 episodes of a TV show, that's going to take me like a month. Some days I'll watch two. Most days I'll watch one episode. Some days I watch no episodes. Right. And mm -hmm. once I started treating it like that, and I've only been playing like an hour or two each day. And again, I'm only like four hours in since it came out last Friday. I'm really fucking enjoying it. And it's wild. It, it like literally just that mental switch where I'm just like, I don't have to feel obligated. I don't have to feel guilty about not playing this game today. It's just like, let me sit down. Let me get an hour of infinite wealth then. And it's just like it like the story's great. The characters are great. I don't know if they actually sped up the combat or if I'm just like pressing the A button faster to get through combat and get through the post combat screens that the RPG elements are not mm. bothering me because I'm just like, boom, done, boom, done, boom, done. Just getting through these fights, not begrudgingly, but just like I know what needs to do. I'm going to do it. Who cares about the post screen? Let me get through it. And it's making it quick and it, it and it's like there's no delay, like get into combat on the street, kick their ass through immediately load me back onto the street. And I'm really, really enjoying it. And it's like it's like a fantastic game. Plus my reduction in stress about not playing five hours of this game every day. It tells me that I'm just going to be enjoying this game for like the next month and a half. I'm just really going to enjoy it. Mm hmm. Well, you've got a question here on the sheet, but I don't know what it is. Oh, yes, I do. Um, question for you here, uh, Will, uh, from the New York Times. Um, I was curious as to the fact that it's a two-parter, in case you're curious. Um, we're going to get there uh, once we do. Uh, I have not played Yakuza Like a Dragon, which is the seventh in the series. I looked up. You don't need to. I know this question. You don't need to, because, again, I only played 25 percent of the first one. I would say maybe go find. There's a little bit of a recap in the game, but it's not enough. Like it was enough to tell me kind of the ending of the game in seven, but it didn't do a good enough job of introducing the characters that I remembered from seven. So I would totally go on YouTube and find some like 30 minute or 60 minute recap. And that way you can see the characters because your party characters actually matter. They're not just randos that you meet and they're in your party. Like they're in every cut scene. You want to know their characters. You're interacting with them a lot. It's a huge part of the story. Again, it's a TV show. They are very strong supporting characters and they're there a lot and their behavior matters. So you definitely, I think you want to be able to get that visual and you want to get a little bit of detail there. So I would say just look up like a 30 to 60 minute YouTube for Yakuza 7. The good thing is Yakuza 7, remember, brand new protagonist in a brand new location with Yokohama. So it, you don't need to catch up on the whole fucking series. You just need to catch up on Yakuza 7 pretty quickly and then you'll be good to go. Okay, so I, w I was more of like, is it worth like, should I just go play 7 instead of buying Infinite Wealth? Uh, so I'm hesitating because it depends what's important to you, right? Do you want to play? So my concern is if you play seven, 
you may have a great time, but you may not then want to play Infinite Wealth because it's another 40 hours of the same thing, right? True. So, Very true. and I'll tell you this right now, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, I'm only four hours in. It's going on the Goaty nominee list. So you're, you're going to have some four pressure. four hours in? Yeah. God, you were talking I'm about, four I thought you were in. at least like 20. No, that's the thing. I'm taking my time. But to be fair, I'm not even to Hawaii yet. I think I'm about to oh, go God. to the airport oh, to go God. to Hawaii. <laughs> I was going to ask if you had unlocked the island yet. Uh, the Dundara no. Dora. But again, hey, I'm four episodes in. I'm four episodes into this. I'm four, I'm four episodes into season one, and I'm loving it so far. Right? It's great. Z Zach uh, from Save Data played the the like i think he's like now he's way deeper than that and and i remember he was talking to chris about uh he felt the intro bit was longer than it should have been and he felt like it was a bit of a slog and chris was like here's the thing the great thing about yakuza is they're like hey i want to do this thing so we're gonna do that and you're gonna sit through it motherfucker uh, so what was what's your stance on that? I feel like you're yeah. You're Zach's got it. bad taste because I I see what he's saying. <laughs> they do they do one or two things. They do basically two different things. There's two different plot lines in the first four episodes of this mm. TV show. Um, and no, I mean I'm just gonna say it. Zach's wrong. Both the plot lines are fucking incredible. They're great. I'm not gonna spoil them. Mm -hmm. But one of them involves how you one of them greatly alters how you interact with the party. That was kind of your core party of four from the first game. And it's very mm -hmm. cute, but it's also heartwarming. It's also a little stressful and it's very great. And then the second one basically has to deal with how uh, I'll spoil it a little bit because it's not that big a deal. But basically the end of Yakuza 7. Two of the biggest Yakuza clans in Japan like come to an agreement where they're like, you know what? This Yakuza thing, it's not working out anymore and it's hurting the people in our clans. So they call it the Great Dissolution. It's these two Yakuza clans that decide to dissolve at the same time. And because of that, there's 30,000 Yakuza that all of a sudden are out of work. And one of them who's Majima's, uh, I'm sorry, not Majima, uh, Kasuga's um, dad, he dies I'm not exactly sure how, but he dies and he's wow. like, my dying wish is I want you to take care of all these ex Yakuza. I can't see them out on the street and I don't want them to get back into crime. So like the other main plot line of the first couple hours is is you as the main character trying to help these ex Yakuza like like lead a good life and get a good job. But at the same time, all these jobs and employers are discriminating against them and being like, I'm not going to hire you. You're your ex Yakuza. I can't trust you to steal. Plus there's this weird law that says I can't hire you for five years as like a legal employee. So it'd have to be under the books. And, but he's like, I'm an ex Yakuza new as well. I know how hard it can be to like do the right thing. So let me help you out. And this, it's two fucking great storylines. So fuck you, Zach. Like they're great. Again, <laughs> The number one advice I can give you is chill out, buddy. It's not a video game. It's a TV <laughs> show. It really has adjusted my mentality because I'll just sit there and be like, yeah. And I'll just sit there, hands on the controller. I'll play it for for like 45 minutes and I will have maybe five, 10 minutes of action time. And the rest of it is cut scenes and story moments. And I'm like fucking balling with this story. Great characters, great writing, etc. So it is slow by game standards, but it's an it's. Again, incredible story. I'm sure you saw it in Yakuza Zero where it's like incredible storytelling. Like a lot mm -hmm. of those side stories are just like talk to person, beat up, go here, beat up, talk to person, end of the side story. They're not mechanically interesting, but it's the people and it's the story and it's the connection to the locations that makes it so fucking good. And it's the same thing in here. So, yeah, you can totally complain about not enough gameplay, etc. That's not what Yakuza is about, baby. That's not what it's about. It's about the people. It's about their connections to the place. And it's about their connections to each other. That's what it's about. Wow. Did not need that. But, uh, you know, congratulations, so anyways, everybody. To answer your question, Will, <laughs> if you're prepared to play two Like a Dragon games this year, go ahead and play seven. But don't feel like you have to. Mm -hmm. You could you could just do a recap. And honestly, there's I don't think there's any problem at all with playing infinite wealth and then going back and playing seven if you wanted to so far there i don't see there's any problem with that no i mean i'll, I'll get arrested other than that though <laughs> yeah that's yeah that's true that's true
um great i'm glad you've been enjoying that what other uh any other games you've been playing that you've enjoyed yeah i've been playing pal world um let's kick it over to you for a bit what's your what's your pal world experience well uh i've been playing pal world for about uh how long it's been out uh i think i'm like 14 15 hours in 16 hours in uh i have what's your what's your what's your main character level i think i'm 22 or 23 Okay, I think I'm at like 2021, 20, so we're yeah. we're around the same. So I I just set up my second base, which is deeper into the into the islands, uh, and I'm like starting with like stone foundations now. Uh, every time I I get ra- my base gets raided, all the people coming to fight me get stuck at the bottom of the cliff and can't <laughs> attack me, and also I can't attack them. Uh, and then uh, I'm just, you know, working them to the bone, those stupid pals. Uh, I've got, I just uh, made my first gun, which is like a musket. And I can shoot bullets. Ooh. I can headshot motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. I've caught several humans, uh, including, uh, uh, they're all bad guys. They're all trying to kill me. So I captured them and, and yeah. I've enslaved them for sure. I've enslaved well, you them. Can- you can capture you can capture good guys too. One of the tips I heard was if you capture one of the merchants from one of the friendly villages, yeah, then you can just put him in your base as a worker, and then you just have a merchant there, and you don't have to travel to see him anymore. Yeah, exactly. And all these people deserve to be enslaved. Uh, it's great. I mean, it kind of reminds me, which people never batted an eye at the. I played a bunch of that Conan survival game where you can just have nude yeah. slave girls dance for you, and nobody batted an eye at that Sorry. when I did that. What game so, is this? Um, it's on Steam. Just what the f- like that <laughs> game. That game ruled. I had a throne with dancing women and <laughs> and like a hundred slaves. I think uh, that. Uh, Actually, we used to raid the town, and you would just walk back, lasso the, the people, and drag them back. <laughs> it was—it's a fantastic video game if you've never played uh, Conan. Uh, I don't remember oh, what Exiles? It's Exiles. Conan Exiles. Hell yeah! It's oh, so no. good. It's very good. Um, yeah. But uh, Pal World's great. Uh, I've caught. I uh, used one of the glitches to catch the boss. Uh, so I have yeah. the I have Grizzbolt with Zoe on his back. And he has like 50 billion health and never dies. Nice. Um, I've captured a couple other bosses. I captured the Bushido guy who like clicks Mm -hmm. his sword and teleports and slashes uh, people. It's like so awesome. Uh, So I've been doing that. And then just slowly. My only problem, like the progression for a while was great. You were just like unlocking stuff unlocking stuff base base and then it gets to the point where you're like when do i get to automate this when do i get to like figure this all out and then i'm at the point now where like i level up upgrade my base and the thing i need to upgrade my base again is like four levels away now so it's like Mm. oh i just like so i've been going around like catching bosses and catching uh multiple pals because when you uh catch multiple pals you get more and more xp bonuses um and uh yeah, it's been fun. I, I I've been quite enjoying it. I think it is a really good survival game. While um, like it does okay on the Pokemon stuff, it kind of feels like Arceus, and I think Scarlet and Violet were like that. But other than that, it just feels like a fun, good uh, Pokemon game or uh, uh, survival yeah. game. Uh, so I've been enjoying Basically, it. How about yeah. you, Ian? Yeah, I think I think same. Um... I think the thing that really surprised me, I did like a two or three hour um, launch day stream. Um, Mm -hmm. And the thing that really surprised me is that this game. okay, this is not going to sound like a surprise, but then I'll start going into depth and then it'll be a surprise. And you guys will be like, wow, he is a genius. He's not a fucking idiot. Um, This game is a mix of existing games, right? And it's not just Pokemon plus guns, which is like the surface level. Oh, they stole from Pokemon and they put guns on top of it. Oh, and then it's just a survival game. But... It's a very intelligent medley. So, you know, uh, some of the survival stuff they're doing, like, for example, uh, storage is shared, right? So if you have uh, two chests on the opposite side of your base, you put an item in one chest, um, it's it it, or or an item in the other chest. You can go to any crafting table inside your base and it'll pull from either chest. So it's just like shared storage across your entire base, which is fantastic. There's a shitload of survival games that don't do that. 
And I and and I've played survival games that do have that mechanic. And I don't want to say they've stolen from it, but they've clearly been like, that was a smart way to do it. Uh, lots of little like UI UX touches. Uh, you know, the open world Pokemon of uh, uh, Arceus, you know, you can just run around and throw Pokemon at people, uh, employing people at your base, you know, like medieval builders, etc. I'm sorry, not medieval, but medieval dynasty does that. A couple others do that. And I'm not saying it took it from them, but it's it's basically hopping around a whole bunch of different genres, not just Pokemon plus guns, but a lot more beyond that and grabbing the things that work that make sense and then putting them together intelligently to make a game that is very fun to play. Like this is not popular because it's Pokemon plus guns. Like I'll, I'll fucking say it. Pokemon Go sucks, but it was popular because it was AR plus <laughs> Pokemon. And that's it. There was nothing more than AR plus Pokemon. It was, oh, look, I can see a little uh, fucking diddlyo over there or whatever, you know? I'm but sorry, there was what? nothing beyond that. A diddlyo. <laughs> oh, no. I couldn't come up with a Pokemon a cast enough. Diddlyo. <laughs> a diddlyo. Um, whereas Power World is like, yes, it's Pokemon plus guns, but it, it feels better than modern Pokemon games. It has a very good survival loop. The building feels pretty good. It has, like you said, it's pretty good progression, etc. cetera. Um, and, and I think this is, this is going to be a controversial take, but I'll fucking stand by it. You know, we talk about how like you have a knife to butcher your Pokemon to get meat from them. So you can, in addition to killing Pokemon in the wild, you can literally have Pokemon that are part of your stable and then you equip a butcher knife and kill them to get meat. So you're sacrificing your own captured Pokemon. You can shoot Pokemon. You can enslave Pokemon to work for you as work slaves. You can enslave people, etc. I think you can butcher people what too. I in- Yeah. Oh, really? What do they drop? I don't actually know. I just heard you could do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, but I think, uh, what I really appreciate that quite frankly, is that people act like that's like disgusting and like horribly unethical, et cetera. And I'm like, what the fuck do you think Pokemon has been the entire time? <laughs> like Pokemon is literally just animal abuse. Like there is zero, there is zero fucking excuse for that like they try and hide it and they're like oh in the pokey ball is a little paradise for them and they're your friend and you don't kill them they just get knocked out and then you revive them and it's like it's okay they love you it's like no it's fucked like the core fucking premise of pokemon is fucked ethically right but they sugarcoat it so much that you just excuse it and they act like it's okay pal world is like no this is fucked and we're just going to let you go all the way through with it. And we're not going to try and hide it. We're not going to try and sugarcoat it. Like in today's modern world, of course, you're going to use a fucking gun to shoot Pokemon. You know, like, like, of course you would, right? They're wild fucking animals. You would shoot them. And it doesn't try and say that's good. It doesn't try and say that's bad. It's just like, that's the fucking state of the world, folks. And it's funny. Like, I'm not I'm not the fucking uh starfield guy that was bald and screaming about pronouns until he was like red in the face oh but yeah I, that guy i genuinely think now that i think about this i'm thinking through this live this really does feel like an incredibly apolitical game and the reason why i say that is they are doing all these unethical games that all sorts of other video games do but they are they have zero they have like zero concept of it being ethically or morally correct or not. And therefore they have zero, they make zero attempt at hiding it or sugarcoating it. They're just like, yeah, of course you can do that. Yeah. You can shoot Pokemon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. you can, you can capture Pokemon with the ball. Okay. Well then throw it at an enemy. Okay. You can, you can capture them too. And it, mm. I, I'm not a huge fan of that, but I at least appreciate that they're not trying to sugarcoat it and not trying to pretend it's not what it is. And they're just like, Nope, this is how it is. And we're not going to make any political statements with that. It's just, we're going to show you the, the actual mechanics that you have been doing and all the other games have been hiding. Does that, does that take, make any sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think also like the popularity helped, like it's reaching people who it doesn't normally reach. So people are making those arguments where Pokemon cutesified it, but like, like again, Conan exiles had slavery and stuff like that. And people didn't yeah. say anything about it because it never got that big and reached that. But now that this game's doing that, it's just like, oh, this is awful. And it's like, it's, I mean, it's just, it's just, yeah. it's just into what it is, you know? 
Um, yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. it's it's cool. yeah. If you look at it with an ethical moral lens, it is awful. But you need to turn that same lens towards a shitload of other video games because they're just as bad. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. I will say uh, so I reached level 21. I don't know what that is, like 10, 15 hours in the game or something. I have not played it for a week, though, and I'm not sure I'm going to go back to it. And it's because I hit what you talked about, which is around level 2021. 20, it feels like you hit this progression thing where you you have a lot available to you in the base but it's all early stuff it's all a lot of manual stuff and you can see a little bit of the automation but it's like further down the tech chain yeah and the same with the guns like you've got a musket now but then you're like how do i get an assault rifle and it's like tech level 30 tech level 40 and i'm like i don't want to keep grinding with my current tech to get there when i've already ground this far just to get where i'm currently at and so it, it's very strong for an early access game i would love to come back to it in three years and who knows, maybe do a series like we enslave Pokemon, the series or whatever, you know, that could be Hell a lot yeah. of fun. It like it's it's very strong for an early access game and has a lot of mechanics implemented and done well. It has a lot of content done well, etc. But I think I've hit the point where I'm like, I don't need to go further in this game in its current state. I'm going to wait a year or two, wait for them to implement more stuff, more polish, add a bit more to it, smooth things out a bit, and then I'll start a fresh playthrough. But that being said, it's on our it's on our Goaty nominee list, right? It's true. It is. I think I put it up there. Um, it's 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 a fantastic game. I think they absolutely nailed what it is as an early yep. access game. And like you said, I think I'll come back to it at like 1.0 or like I would do a series with it because then multiple of us are working at it and we'll yeah, get I think that would be fun faster and faster. So, um, yeah, for sure. Um, Carl, have you touched it at all? zilch nothing zilch? okay <laughs> nah. what are your opinions on enslaving pokemon uh so moving Bro. on <laughs> actually <laughs> quick question for y'all since we're still on this do you think it got as much flack as it did because it's come out in like this era of uh like a lot of like how do i like with tiktok and instagram and like twitter and everything like every, there's so much saturation of content and people reviewing shit sometimes outside of their own circle is that you think why it's gotten that much flack more than it would have that's I a think, good, that's a good question ago? i think i think the premise of pokemon with guns is what brought it any anywhere yeah. to the height of wh yeah. what it is but, For sure. but yeah. why is is it because pokemon and nintendo fans are so protective of what they have that they don't want to see anybody else touch it i don't i don't think i think that's it's more it, of that's like just an idea whoa i saw this hey uh will saw this thing a picture of pokemon with guns it's this game power world and i'm gonna post that in the discord and then as someone else might see it and go oh i wouldn't normally send this to my friend but my friend loves pokemon so why don't i send them this funny pokemon with guns and so like i feel like it's spread to people who aren't video gamers or like mm -hmm. through that route so i think it just garnered all of that plus it being a good game and then the the like drummed up controversy with it i think it i mean it's the same thing with but the, i think the, but the i think carl's question is in the last but i think day. carl's question if i may paraphrase it is why are people getting so upset at this game i right? yeah, i think it's the pokemon yeah. thing i think i think yeah, yeah it's a, people getting upset is is hey i like pokemon you're you're stealing my like pokemon from me i yeah. have loyalty to a corporation who makes money off of me for yeah, some reason because i think about i think about fortnite right when fortnite was first announced uh, when fortnite the battle royale fortnite was first announced and came out that shit was a straight fucking rip of PUBG, right like at yeah. that point there was a lot of stuff in PUBG that was not in any other battle royale you know the flying in the dropping etc and fortnite was just a cash grab rip off of that and not a lot of people got pissed at that because there weren't like a huge amount of like rabid decades long PUBG fans like there are Pokemon fans. But I think the other thing is, you know, Pokemon plus guns and those original trailers of Pal World made it seem like a really shitty mobile ad crash like like cash grab type game. Right. Yeah. It did not it did not showcase well that there was an actual game underneath there with like well designed mechanics, et cetera, and some replayability. It just said fucking cash grab all over it. And I think the entire industry as a whole is like, no, 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 no. We're not stupid. Don't try and sell us that shit. Right. And so I think part of it is people who saw the original trailers and they assume that's what it was. And now when the game comes out, 
they're refusing to give it to try or they're refusing to give it at a second glance and they're just saying why are you playing that stupid cash grab game that's that's shitty why are you playing candy crush but it's pokemon plus guns etc mm-hmm. um which is a shame because there actually is some interesting stuff there there's there's it's it's a very competent survival game it's probably one of the best pokemon games i've ever played um i would say at least in the last five ten years because like arceus there's a lot shared between arceus and pal world that pal world just flat out does better oh yeah. and scarlet violet i hated scarlet and violet it was not good <laughs> and like all the open world stuff just fell flat was not working etc whereas pal world feels fantastic running around and capturing pokemon and battling them etc so it, it, it i wish people would give it a second look it deserves it yeah for sure um, moving on here from Pal World, I I beat Origami King. I have folded the last fold. Um, I will say it again, and I'll say it for the last time. Uh, Origami King is an extremely well written, good looking, funny, awesome game. It has the worst combat system in a video game I've ever played ever. And not just the like pressing A to get extra damage, but the whole like circle thing and the matching up and all that is awful and terrible and I hate it. And I was avoiding I, combat I, at the end of the game. Yeah, I wish it was good because I love the idea of a turn based RPG actually being more puzzle than turn based RPG where it's like, yeah, yeah you, mm. you could use this like a turn based RPG, but there's a solution here to like max it. And right. Like, I love that idea. It just wasn't well implemented. I'm not to toot my own horn here but i'm very good at puzzle games Uh and like puzzles in games um and like puzzles in general um jigsaw puzzles not as much but i'm pretty good at puzzle solving puzzles uh and even that with this was just like like with the spinning disc and everything like half the time i was like what the fuck am i supposed to do here and then there is at least a system where you can pay the toads if you pay the toads over 100 coins uh, they will start s- solving the puzzle for you. And also on the boss fights, it'll draw the path your character will move. So you don't have to like uh, eyeball it. So mm. I, towards the latter half of the game, I just kept paying the toads a hundred bucks every every fight and every boss fight. So I just, and every boss round. So I just knew where the heck I was going to end up. And then the other problem is all those boss fights are, you don't learn how to do the boss fight until you're, you get one of the letters on the playing field in the first round. So your first round is always wasted because you don't know what kind of attacks you can do. You don't know what kind of like things to avoid. You have to like get that um, uh-huh. note. And then sometimes you have to unlock a chest. It's just like, it would have been so much better as just a straight up JRPG or something like that. It just would have felt a yeah. lot better. And I like it makes me want to play other. It makes me excited for the Thousand Year Door remake and to play other Mario mm. Paper Mario games. But never. I'm glad they changed the combat every game because never use that system ever again, please. It was awful and I hated it. Um, and then uh, I've been playing Dead Cells. I finally got to the point where I just looked up what I had to do next for the progression because I could not figure it out. Um, and it's the. Well, so- I, what was the problem? Because I, I just remember it being like you explore the whole area and at some point you hit a door that's just like, hey, go to the next area. Yeah, but it was like I had to kill a boss in a certain area to get the next rune that lets me yeah, like break so. down through things. But it was in it's just called a boss fight. No, I know it's called a boss fight, but it's it's <laughs> there's like four different paths to go through. So I just didn't know which one it was at. So I had, I just ended up looking it up because it's 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 not like it's not it doesn't guide you to it. You just have to know where it is. I I'm sorry. I got to defend Dead Cells here cuz I, I never had to look it up. It was always just like you always eventually get to that boss in a run, right? <laughs> and then by the time you beat that boss, then you have an ability that you can then use at previous locations you've already seen. I I think you may have I think you may be overcomplicating it. No, I listen, it was it was I went I did the toxic sewers and then I got the first rune and then I did the next thing and then the third rune you need which is like the downward attack one, you have to go mm. not to the to- you have to go to the promenade, then you have to go to yeah. the second exit in the in the promenade 
to get to the ossuary yeah. and then you have to find it in the ossuary it's not at the exit it's just a random location in there um, yeah yeah I, I, there's like 15 different levels to go to <laughs> maybe I, I i'll give you a little bit of a doubt i played it right when it hit 1.0 so maybe they have added a lot more to it and complicated it since then but for me it was always like do you want to go here or there and i pretty quickly learned after a couple runs that like oh i can't go there because i don't have the the ability yet so i always have to go this way and then come back this way but they may have complicated it since then yeah it was basically like i mean i took a what two weeks off from it but when i got back into it i was like oh i need this one rune where in the 15 levels is the one rune like what do i have to do to get that rune mm -hmm. like i have no idea gotcha and there's no journal there's no list that shows you what runes you have um or anything like that so uh it was mm. just it was just kind of frustrating i mean i'm still loving the game but uh i at least went and got that rune and then now i assume i can just go on the other path now but i literally have no idea where i go next um so i'll end up trying to figure that out manually i'll brute force for a little bit and then we'll see what happens but yeah that's dead cells uh it's pretty good feels really good especially when you make it to the next place with like under time and you get to go in the cool room that gives you a bunch of points uh it's very fun uh metroidvania go play it it's good and that is the games we've been playing this week folks time to head on over to the news town i heard they got a new sheriff over in news town <laughs> ian gibson tell me about I, the news uh do you want to start with the the good news or the bad news the bad news is i got laid off this week everybody <laughs> okay i didn't mean to start off with that but the, okay uh yeah i'm sorry to hear that buddy that sucks it's okay i'm not gonna I, ask you for details because i don't know what papers you signed but you previously worked at game spot spot is that correct can yes. i just say when you told me the news I may have, no joke, Googled GameStop layoffs twice in a row looking for news before I realized, like, oh, I'm 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 Googling the wrong one again. <laughs> um, yeah, it's I mean, it was it was it was thankfully just like business reasons because of all the layoffs and the economy. Yeah, you're and whatever shitty that at your means. business job. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just yeah, kidding. my business boy job. Uh, so that sucks. But honestly, I have entered a network of people uh now that is wild and i have gotten mm -hmm. messages from people being like hey this company reached out to me because they heard about layoffs i'm giving them like can i give them your email for them to reach out to you and like all that sort of stuff and i had people who i didn't work directly with just message me on twitter and being like hey i'm sorry about this i'll keep an eye out for you and have also sent me job listings like they saw so nice it's like pretty nice. it's really nice I understand now, like from the outside, you're always like, oh, how did this person go from GameSpot to Polygon to IGN to whatever? And like now it makes a lot more sense because the people who are hiring and firing are not the people on the teams. So you're like, there's no, yeah, it, it wasn't like Tam was the one who fired me. Like there's no, or no. his decision. So it's like this if nice. It, if it's, yeah, I'll, I'll say if it's anything like the companies I've worked at before, uh managers aren't involved directors aren't involved the lowest level would probably be vps involved yeah like 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 organizational vps if that it usually just comes down to hr looking at some weird fucking metric and just being like that 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 person it's yeah. usually absolute bullshit reasons and it's annoying too because they always and this i'm not saying this is this time but in pre i've been laid off before um for what i've worked at startups um is that really called a layoff if it's just me um i uh, <laughs> no <laughs> no if it's not it's called actually fired, sometimes buddy. there was a couple of but us actually if they're removing your position i think it technically counts yeah. as a layoff but it's always like oh it's not performance based it's not anything you did and sometimes i'm just like wait why isn't it performance based wouldn't you want the best people to still be working yeah. for you like what are you fucking exactly, you talking yeah. about <laughs> like what do you mean yeah. it's not performance and i get they're saying that so i don't take it personally and yeah. honestly it probably isn't performance based um it fucking it fucking should be there was one layoff that i was involved in <laughs> and 
two people got laid off and literally in the meeting i felt kind of bad because i was friendly with them but it made sense they were like yes there have been layoffs in the company like of the 30 developers these are the two people we had to let go and if you think about it and know their performance it makes sense and it was like like it, it sounded like shit talking but at the same time to everybody in that room it was like it was like an underhanded way of saying like okay uh, that makes sense. Like, like, thank yeah. you. It's telling us that you actually did take performance into consideration because I've also been in layoffs where very good people were laid off. And it was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, how are we going to live without that person at the company anymore? You know, yeah. so it's like I see exactly what you're saying. Please take performance into consideration in the layoffs. <laughs> to be clear, uh, if performance was taken into consideration, I'd probably still be fired. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, but everyone at GameSpot, those who are still there and those who left, like, like you would look at those people and be like, how do you even choose if it is performance based? There's like no way to do that. Yeah. Um, but I only bring that up because like when uh, George and I got laid off together at uh, our previous company, they were like, oh, we're laying you two off. So we got laid off. And then everyone that's still at the company texted us the plans that they pitched after that. And we were just like, we're the two people who, who know how to do that. And you just laid them so off. Dumb. And so the rest of the team just quit. <laughs> and then yeah. COVID happened. Oh. So uh, they got fucked. But um, yeah, it's just yeah. like, it's another day, another dollar. I got, this is the first time I got, I got, well, I, I, won't, I won't talk about hey, it anymore. Congratulations. Hey, congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, that's good to hear. Um, that's I got good to, to keep the laptop. <laughs> I got a MacBook great. now. Sell that. Uh, yeah, sell that shit. I, honestly, I think I might because my 2013 yes. MacBook still runs perfectly fine. Think about God, Will. Think about how much fucking AV shit you can get off Craigslist and Facebook <laughs> oh Marketplace with that money. <laughs> Why would I get so much shit? Wait, AV get equipment so can get off? That's crazy. Oh no, gets me off. <laughs> Dude, I want to go back to save data. <laughs> no, you can't. They actually, he just signed your signed you over to us. Yeah, you've been sorry. You've been laid off of save data. No. Laid on. Yeah, you're getting laid at Subpixel. No. Yeah, we've. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> getting, getting, uh, never mind. Um, yeah, so that's the layoff season. Uh, of course, there's the other uh, layoffs at yeah, other companies. I'll, there's the 1,900 people from Microsoft. Uh, and Blizzard yep. and all that sort of stuff. You you can go through it. Ni- I, uh, 97 from Eidos Montreal, or sorry, Eidos Montreal, 61 from Sega of America, 28 from Nimble Giant, uh, unknown number from GameSpot, half of Devolver's Artificer Studio, and Airship Syndicate laid off 12 staff. So um, it will also layoffs across the tech industry. I was thinking about this uh, today, yesterday, and it's I'm sorry, Riot laid off 530 people. I am concerned because it feels like over the last two or three years, it has become the trend in the tech industry and the video game industry to do. January layoffs, and mm. I'm going to I'm going to say it as somebody who's informed as in, I feel like I understand what's going on here. The January layoffs are not. Uh, at least half of them are not happening for business reasons, as in we have to let go of these people. Otherwise, we will not be able to make payroll budget, etc. It is happening because in in today's fucked up post capitalist society, if you have a company that puts out 10 products and that company says, hey, we can let go of 500 of our employees and still put out those 10 products of the same quality, then the marketplace and the industry and the stock market and the stockholders go, wow, you're doing such a great job. You just made your company more efficient by putting out the same quality and quantity of product with less people. You just reduced your payroll. Great job. And so now the problem has become over the last couple of Januaries, the trend is to show that your business is in good health. You lay people off and that's fucked. That's mm. completely fucked. And it's it's one of those things where there's like a push pull between workers, between employees and employers, where the employees are like, look, we got work for home. We've got a whole bunch of job market availability. I don't have to put up with your shitty job anymore. I can leave and find another job and I can get all sorts of benefits and these things that I expect, et cetera. And the employers are like, cool, well, we're going to start doing layoffs every January because fuck you. It's an easy way to pad our bottom line and make ourselves look better to shareholders like the Microsoft uh, uh, stock jumped when they announced the layoffs because it was not an indicator of poor health. It was an indicator of efficiency. 
And I'm very concerned. This is the third year in a row that it's happened that this January layoff season is going to become the fucking norm in the tech and video game industry. And that's fucked. Period. Yeah. Yeah. uh, It's funny. Uh, when I got laid off, Karen, I told Karen and she messaged me. I don't know, the same day. I know, yeah, it was the same day. She was like, oh, yeah, I found an article from 10 days ago talking about it. And I was like, what? And I look at the article, and 10 days ago, a year and 10 days ago, was when Stu and all those people were laid off from GameSpot. Yeah. So I was like, oh, it's f- fucked. Like, fuck. Wow. Um, it's like, everything's yeah. fucked. <laughs> it, it really is. It's This is the third year in a row, because I think two years ago was when... Uh, Facebook and Google, they started they, they had they'd started their hiring freeze a couple months before, and then they started laying off people in mass. And the industry was like, wow, like at first it's initial like, oh, do they think the recession's coming? Then they're like, no, this is actually a sign of efficiency and like optimization. Like if you can get rid of 10 percent of your workforce and still put out the same product, that's great. And I'm like, fuck you, people. Fuck you, people. It's fucked. Yeah, I was not to belabor this any longer, but I was heard the pitch of like someone being like, hey, companies are always like, oh, we need 10 percent growth, 20 percent growth the next year. What's wait, why can't I hear you anymore, Ian? Oh, no, Carl, are you still there? Has my Internet gone down? What is happening? My computer shut off? Am I still live? Are we back? Yeah, we're... Is that my internet? Nope. Carl's still here. You're still here, right? Hello. Yeah, what Discord just back. died for I'm a back. bit. I thought that was just on my end. Was that Discord? No, it was on my end, too. Will, Will you, like, went, like, super gone slash robot voice for like 15 oh, seconds weird. you guys uh, you guys disappeared too i wonder if that must have been a discord yeah. thing because my it was a discord thing my ping was my, 5k uh, so it was my uh, internet was fine the whole time yeah okay we're good weird. now oh karen just texted me now. no it's them uh okay um <laughs> no but it was like the 10 percent growth 20 percent growth and like someone's just like well what if they were like hey let's not grow this year let's just like try to get comfortable Not allowed to. and it's just like mm. this mentality of like we must always grow is is crazy when you think about it and like like Fucking i get part of it is. but also i'm fine with the seven thousand people that subscribe to us like i mean who cares yeah. like what well no 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 we? i do want to grow oh yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i don't mean to get a political economical year but i was talking to my dad about this this morning and there's like the old joke where it's like capitalism isn't a perfect system but it's the best system we have right now and i still kind of believe that but i'm mm-hmm. leaning more towards the like communism. okay what's the next system what's the next system like yeah it's better than communism etc but what's in feudalism etc but what's the next system? Can we move beyond capitalism? Like, it's not the end all be all as as evidenced by all the fucking problems we're having nowadays by ultra capitalist society. Um, yeah, it's it's fucked. Um, I like I'll, I'll tell you this. My whole mentality right now. Is I'm trying to buckle down financially because I'm trying to retire. I don't want to say retire as soon as possible. I'm trying to retire by the time I'm 50, which is basically 16 years away. So I'm just like, let me just fucking retirement account, sock up the money. Let me just get here. And I want to get the fuck out of this industry. Like, I don't want to have to deal with economics unless I'm at the grocery store buying food. Right. I don't want to be part of any fucking job market. I don't want to deal with any of that shit. So that's like that's my mentality now is I want to check out of this this hell hellscape system, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until they all they take it all away. They're going to take it all away. Ian. they're going to cart you. I I mean, (laughs) I, there's been shitload of layoffs at my job and people leaving like crazy. It's it's chaos for the last five, six years. So, yeah, I could I could be fired tomorrow. Who the fuck knows? That's the problem with this whole layoff thing is it's just like mm-hmm. like you said, it's not performance based and the industry only sees positive benefits from laying people off. So it's just any fucking day. No job security. You could be gone. Man, Who cares? Yeah, if you get laid off, we're streaming 24 uh, <laughs> hey, seven. You know, that's a good segue. 
you want to stream tomorrow? I've got, I've, I have, I can host and I have a special cheer up Will stream planned. <gasps> I get to finally Ooh. see it. <laughs> I saw yours at Extra Life. <laughs> you make me wear a blindfold. Yeah, you get to see mine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we could do it. We could do it because I, I took off this whole week because I didn't take off for the holidays. And I was like, finally, things have calmed down at work. So I'm going to take off the whole week. So we could do it. We could do a chill daytime stream tomorrow. If you yeah, want. I was I was possibly going to record uh, a uh, Chasing Kojima Ooh. with one uh, Zach from Save Data. But, you know, he was going to cancel on you anyways. Yeah, he was probably going to cancel <laughs> on me anyways. Um, uh, that ties into our next thing here about the state of play. Um, you're gonna ask me about it. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I have not watched the Death Stranding 2 stuff. <gasps> oh, what? I know. And at this I... point, I don't know if wow. I want to. I kind of just, I've seen the Alan Wake puppet. I think you do. And George Miller, and that's all I've seen. Well, let me, without specifics, let me tell you my reaction to it, which is basically... Carl, what's your history with Death Stranding? Uh, wanted to play the first one and then never did. <laughs> okay, wow. let me tell you. It's a good time to play it because I played the first, like, two hours of the first one on launch, and I hated it. And then oh. about a year ago, I played the first one again all the way through, and I loved it. So it's one of those huh. games where, like, you got to come into it with the right mentality and, like, mm. an openness to it, and it will reward you. It's it, if you're trying to play it release day, like a lot of the reviews were negative, et cetera, it's not going to work out for you. Um, and so I'm glad I did, because watching the second trailer, I'm like, I, I, I was never a big Metal Gear Solid fan. Nothing is Metal Gear Solid or Kojima. It's just I, I wasn't really playing the games because I wasn't into consoles at the time. Hmm. And so I never really got on the Kojima bandwagon. But having played through Death Stranding, and seeing all the weird shit he does and then seeing the Death Stranding 2 trailer and seeing even more weird shit, no specifics needed. I'm like, yeah, you do yeah. you, buddy. Like, I'm on fucking board for all your weird shit because I know even if it doesn't necessarily pay off, it will at least be an entertaining ride. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. mm. It's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so well, you should watch that trailer. Well, did you at least see the, the title of the game? It's uh uh on the beach. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. that, that leaked is? though. I I think that leaked a couple weeks before. Yeah, it's a pretty yeah. good name. Not... Is I it? don't. I don't <laughs> think so. It's too. It, here's the problem though. It's Kojima. I'm expecting something fucking crazy. That's too normal. Yeah. That's that's Forbidden West, right? That's Valhalla. That's a normal ass sequel title. I don't want that. I want something fucking bonkers. I want Beyond the Mind. You know, I want on whales back. I want 3.57 dream drop rebirth distance, right? <laughs> That's what Kojima delivers. Princess Beach. Thank you, Campfire Knight. <laughs> I forgot about yes. that. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I don't know. Death Stranding 2. Uh, I'll have to watch it eventually, but uh, so far I've put it off. Um, you're going to see it on Twitter anyway, so you might as well just watch yeah. it. There's nothing like it's people keep it acting like it's the same as the original trailers, but it's not because now you kind of understand the game. And there was nothing in this that was like complete fucking mystery or where I'm like, I have no idea what's happening. I felt like I could piece all of it together based on what I played in the first game. Um, so it's not as weird as the Death Stranding one trailers where you had no idea what was going on, what this game was, etc. But it's yeah. it, it is showing a lot of weird stuff where you're just like, oh, cool. Oh, cool. What's that? Oh, that's weird. Cool. You know, so, yeah, you should totally you should watch it. OK, I'll check it out then. Uh, thanks for the. Did you watch any any of the state of play? <clears throat> I watched up to the Death Stranding trailer and that's when Karen got home and we were eating dinner and oh, okay. I thought, e watch this while eating dinner. It's Kojima. I'm not sure. So I didn't watch it while eating dinner. Mm. Oh, that's fair. But I think you yeah. would have been okay. I remember. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Uh, what did you see in the state of play, Carl? That you enjoyed? Uh, I thought the hold on. What was it called? Uh, Rise of Ronin. Was that the the one with the yes. the samurai with the fedora? I was like, oh, okay. That one. That one struck me because it looked it looked just like an Assassin's Creed the 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 running around the environment and the traversal yeah. and everything I but i was mean. like i'm okay with a non ubisoft 
Assassin's Creed because I think they are mm. making the same game over and over again. Whereas I think a studio coming in and copying that formula in a way could be interesting. And then the combat, I hate to say it, the combat looked very similar to Ghost of Tsushima. I'm not saying that as a negative, just as like I'm trying to think of what game it looked the most like where it's like you have stances and you do have to worry about parry and defense, but it's not quite as punishing as Dark Souls. Mm. So that looked pretty interesting as well. That that was another one. I'm right there with you. It it it, it definitely looked interesting to me. Um, yeah, it looked like, what, what else did like you? Sekiro. Yeah, that was my initial thought too. Yeah, but not as again not as punishing. It looked like it was just like, hey, here's an open world. Yeah, go around, explore. You can traverse. You can get into some combat I don't stuff. Oh, he's fighting this you guy know? with claws. It looks pretty pretty tough. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know. I, I was watching the health bars, and it didn't seem like he was like one shot dying to people you know which i was it's, like cool it's a little it's bit one more of those approachable. things where with these games and the trailers it's either a hit or miss it's kind of like when the uh what was it lies of p when that trailer came out i was like yeah i'm excited yeah. it ended up being super good but like it was like yeah i this looks amazing this looks very promising but is this gonna play well or does this just look cool and i feel like this is another case of that yeah although yeah. but this is developed by team ninja so, you know, what good, have they done? Good, good Anything legacy. Good? There. Yeah, it was <laughs> Team Ninja? You, you guys don't know Team good? Ninja. They've done, they've done. Are they uh, good? Uh, I'm checking Wikipedia just to be sure. They, they did Neo, right? Dead or Alive, Neo. Dead or Alive, Ninja Gaiden. They did Neo, Wo Long Fallen Dynasty. They've done a lot of stuff like this. So this is this feels hmm. like them making a slightly more approachable open world version of this, and I'm like, awesome. Uh, Let's. Do I was it. doing a bit because yeah. it's literally. All of their games are exactly the same, pretty much. Oh, <laughs> this looks different, though. This does I mean, look different. It still looks like Neo and. Uh, but I'm, but like Neo, that. Neo was more yeah. Soulsborne than than like open world traverse across an NPC city type thing. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Sure. Whatever. Um. Anything else grab your attention? DD, DD two, DD two. It looks good. I'm excited to play it. I bounced off DD1 when I tried to play it a couple years ago when you were playing it, but I've That's committed good. to I'm going to give DD2 a solid shot. God, I'm going to put that DD2 inside me. No, Did you see? So I think good. I, I think there was it was at least 25 minutes of gameplay that journalists got recently hands on with DD2 and it was yes. full of lots of positive praise. Did you see that? Yeah, I am. Um... I was I had actually was editing footage. I think Jake Decker played it, uh, and he had sent me the capture, and uh, it looked pretty banger a while ago. So I it just looks so good. I can't wait to play it, and just like all the improve like all the stuff in the first game, but in 2024, I'm very excited to like have uh -huh. that in a game because it's it's gonna be fun and just like just watching this, the guy like effort effortless effortlessly. Uh, jumping up, thank you. Jumping up onto the uh, dragon and just like fucking him up. I was telling Karen about it because she remembers. I spent like an hour in the character creator, and then I spawned. It's probably not an hour, like half an hour. And then I spawned my character in, and we realized I never turned the camera for the profile, so I just had this flat <laughs> nose and this like barrel <laughs> chest, and it was like the ugliest character oh ever. And that God. opening cutscene is them like shirtless, getting their their heart Jeez. taken out by the dragon and everything. Um, so that's uh, and I made hideously ugly pawns in that game because it was just a lot of fun. So. It just looks gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So I can't wait to play Dragons a Dogma yeah. Two. Um, what'd y'all think of Judas? Um, I yeah, I, I'm like I'm happy that there's a new Bioshock, but at the same time, it looks too much like Bioshock, and that was a long time ago. Like I need Bioshock mm. felt like something brand new when it came out. I don't want to play that again. I want to play something brand new in the theme of bioshock yeah. it looks like bioshock infinite like there were a couple moments where i was like is this yeah. Bioshock infinite and then it did a little bit of like the cyber punky stuff and that main lady just looks like elizabeth like the yes. eyes and everything yes. so it's like There's again a lighthouse i i replayed those what two years ago all three still fantastic games uh -huh. i honestly think uh infinite's my favorite like gameplay wise I can um, see that. I can see that. 
uh, story wise, it's a bit between one and infinite, but um, yeah, I just Judas looked cool. I I thought it looked. I, I'll I, definitely be playing it for sure. Yeah, I was thinking about infinite. Like like I don't disagree with you. I think infinite is probably the best gameplay wise, but I I didn't like infinite that much because I was expecting a lot more from it. Yeah, uh, you know, like Bioshock one was something brand new. Bioshock two was more of the same, but in an interesting way. Bioshock Infinite felt like it was doing the same thing Bioshock 1 did, and it also took stuff away from it in a way. And it felt like I, I got really worried when I was watching Judas, where I was like, exactly like you, I was like, this looks like, I don't want to say it looks like, because to me, it was like, this feels like Bioshock Infinite, where it's mm-hmm. more Bioshock, but I don't want more Bioshock. I want better bioshock especially with all this time passed so yeah it mm. I, I think it'll be at least minimum a solid seven right but i need more than that from there i think i think if you replay infinite i, I think if you replayed all one and infinite you would see the difference like infinite just like I, again plays much better and also it has all the moments it, it's i think that my favorite part is columbia is still a functioning city so you get to experience Columbia and not just at the beginning yeah. before yeah. like everyone's set on Booker, but like halfway through when you're like at the beachfront and all that stuff. And then you hit the like alternate reality and that stuff kind of compounds it. And at that point, it, like it doesn't, I always felt like it didn't overstay its welcome where it was just like piling things on and like rush you through to the end. Uh, and I think it did a great job. And that story is a lot more coherent when you're not like a dumb teenager not understanding what any of it means um yeah yeah that's fair uh it makes a little bit more sense nowadays uh there's always a lighthouse so uh i am pretty i wonder if there'll be a lighthouse in judas that'd be genuinely oh. funny um, yes yeah there will be for sure anything you want to call out here ian honestly no overall it felt like a solid january you know i'm not expecting any three showcase but it felt like it was like hey here's some games coming up. We're not going to show our whole hand, but we're going to get you a little bit excited and we're going to give you an update on some big games upcoming like Dragon's Dogma 2, Death Stranding 2, etc. Are, are we going to play Helldivers 2? Actually, yeah. yeah. It looks it's, it's, really it on, good. It, I think it's on PlayStation. But yeah, because I, I I wanted to play that original. I'm not a big fan. It was it was a twin stick top yeah, down, top right? Down. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of that genre, but yeah, put that shit in third person. Hell yeah. We're going to play that for sure. Yeah, I'll put that on the stream planner. Put that on the stream planner. Plan that. If you could plan, if you could, hey, plan that on the stream planner for whenever it comes out, which is, does it say at the end of it? Pre order now. Guys, you can pre order it now. February 8th. That's so February, soon. Yeah. yeah. That's so soon. That's like seven days. That's, day. next, That's Thursday. next Thursday. Instead of local next chat. Thursday. Local chat and Helldivers 2 is what we're doing next Thursday. Yeah. I mean, maybe Actually, I'll play yeah, it after I'll, work. God. I don't mean to behind the scenes it, but I'll literally put that on the calendar for next Saturday right now. Do it, girl. Put it on that calendar. Slather it on, it on there. there. Do it, girl. Uh, well, you're slathering the calendar, folks. Uh, wishlist Spotlight is a thing we do here uh, where we wishlist uh, and spotlight wishlisted items on Steam, usually indie games, other cool things like that. The game I have chosen chosen this week. Sorry, I'll give you a clean take there, Jake. The game I've chosen for Wishlist Spotlight this week is Deep State. Uh, you will click on Deep State and realize why Will likes this, because it looks like Deus Ex and System Shock 2. Um, Deep State is a uh, retro FPS with combines elements of the immersive sim genre with the classic 90s FPS action. Employ both stealth and lethal firepower to navigate expansive levels as you travel the globe on a mission to uncover the truth between, behind a top secret black project. Literally the plot. Uh, same plot threads as Deus Ex. Um... I just thought this looked really fun. They even reference uh, GoldenEye, Deus Ex, Resident Evil. Mm. Uh, I love a good immersive sim. I love this early 2000s PC aesthetic. I think it's a toss-up between that and PlayStation 1 aesthetics as my favorite like uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Also, early CGI, mm. early clean CGI, like textureless CGI is hideously delicious. I love it. Um, so definitely check this out. Wishlisted on Steam. That is Deep State. 
Uh, it is seems to be coming soon. It says, pop that on your wish list. Wish lists help uh, these developers know the demand for their game and also tell Steam to rank them higher and give them more press. So definitely check that out. Um, yeah, that's it. That's this week's wish list spotlight. Uh, are we ready to get out of here? I think so. I think we're ready to blow everybody away. Folks, uh, thank you so much for being here. Carl, the wonderful, the fantastic, the lovely. I'm, I'll point this way. This man over here, he is incredible. Carl, where can people find you on the internet? You can find me over on Save Data Team and my semi dead channel, Official Procrastinator. Hell yeah. He makes good music, folks. Um, you can find uh, all of our content at subpixelfilms.com bring you straight to our link tree where you can do all sorts of cool things. Ian and I will be back tomorrow supposedly with some sort of stream so check that out I will be here on Saturday with my cool video CCTV camera doing weird things so I don't know what I'm going to do yet I'll probably watch a show or, or play a game, set up the N64, we'll see um Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We'll be back next uh, Thursday with Local Chat. Bye. Bye.